Hello there, thanks for watching and I appreciate you. This is a video in a series of videos showing you how to make a custom character controller that uses rigid body physics, sim machine cameras, Unity's new input system, and custom player gravity. In the last video we set up basic player inputs, and in this short video we're going to make a game environment to play around in, create our player, and implement basic player movement using the input system we set up in our last video. Alright, let's jump right in and create an environment to play around in. First we'll start with creating a new folder under assets, called materials. I'm also going to create another folder called physic materials under scripts. I'm going to create another folder and call it controllers. And create another folder and call it misc. And with the folder creation out of the way, we'll go to the hierarchy panel up here and we will right click, create empty, and we'll call it objects. And we'll create another one, empty, and we'll call it player. You're going to right click on objects, 3D objects, create a new plane, and we'll just call this ground. For the ground plane we just created, we're going to go under transform, and we're going to set the scale. The X will be 50, the Y, which is the height, it's a plane, we're going to leave that one, and we're going to change the Z to 50. And we're going to set the position, the Y, to negative 2. In the hierarchy panel, under player, we're going to go ahead and right click, create empty, call it humanoid, right click again, create empty, and we're going to call it red. Right click again, 3D objects, capsule, and this you can call whatever you like, obviously you can call anything whatever you like, but I'm just going to call it player. And I'm actually going to, for now, take the main camera, and I'm going to drag and drop it, and put it under player. That way the main camera will follow our player. Back under player, we're going to right click the capsule collider, remove component, and also under player, we're going to change the transform, the Y, to 1.5. Back to our red empty game object, we're going to click on that. We're going to click add component under the inspector. We're going to add a rigid body. And we're also going to add a capsule collider. We're going to change the capsule collider's height to 3. And the rigid body mass, we're going to change to 60. The drag to 4. The angular drag to 4. And for now, we're going to leave gravity enabled. I prefer to have continuous speculative collision detection. You can leave collision detection to discrete by default. But I might suggest to actually just use continuous speculative. I think it gives a smoother experience. Under constraints, we're going to freeze rotation. Now down in your projects panel, and click on the materials folder, right click, create, material, and we're just going to call it ground. And you can take this and drag and drop it onto the ground. Over in the inspector, you can change the color by single clicking on it and choosing a color that you like. We're just going to go over blue for now. Again, under materials, create material, and we're going to call this one red. We're going to drag and drop this onto our player, and then we're going to click over the inspector again to change the color. And we're going to make this a red. Under physics materials, we're going to right click, create, physic material, and I'm just going to call it no friction. Select it, and in the inspector panel, we're going to change all the values to zero. We're going to go to edit, project settings, physics, default material, you can just click the dot here, select no friction, double click it, and it'll set no friction as the default material. So by default, we'll have no friction, it'll be like we're ice skating. In the projects panel again, Let's go to the controllers folder under scripts, right click, create C sharp script. And I'm going to call this humanoid land controller and we'll double click to open that in Visual Studio or your editor of choice. Get rid of the stuff that we don't need. Now I'm going to go ahead and just type up what we need to make the character move and we'll come back through and we'll go over what exactly it does.
All right, I messed up at the end there. <laughs> I'm not quite used to Visual Studio, but anyway, let's go through this line by line. It's not that much code, it's only about 30 lines of code. So right off the bat, creating a rigid body variable to store a rigid body component in. We are creating a serializable field for human land input, and we're calling it underscore input. We have a vector three variable that we're calling player move input. We have a header section that's going to show in the inspector as movement. We have a serializable field, which is going to allow us to change the movement multiplier on the fly from the inspector to whatever we want. In the awake function, which only gets called once, we're going to store the rigid body component in our rigid body variable, effectively caching the component. In the fixed update loop, we're getting the player movement input and we're storing it in the vector3 variable player move input. In the get move input function, all we're doing is we're returning the move input from our input handler. So if you recall, up here we have input, it's our humanoid land input which is what we set up in our last video. And we have the public variable, move input. So back to our humanoid land controller, which we just set up. We're taking our move input, our X, and we're assigning it to our player move input as the X. We are changing the Y to the Z. That's a little confusing, but right here, we don't care what the value is. This is just the up and down value. We're not setting this right now. We're going to use this later for gravity and jumping, so forth and so on. Um, but the Y, we're using for the Z value. And we're just returning that to player move input. Afterwards, we're calling the player move function. And all the player move function does is it takes our current player move input. And we're saying that it equals player move input X, which we set here. And we're modifying it with our movement multiplier and our rigid body mass. Same thing with the Z and the Y we're leaving alone because we'll calculate that later. The movement multiplier, again, that's a variable that we set up here. We can change that to whatever we want, depending on how fast we want our character to move or how quickly we want them to move. And then we're multiplying it by the rigid body mass, which you do not have to do. Uh, in a finished game or a game that's not finished and even in alpha, you're not going to want this here probably. This is just, it just makes it so you can move kind of consistently regardless of what your rigid body mass is. All right, and that's pretty much it for basic player movement. It's very simple. Now with this done, let's go ahead and go back to Unity. It's going to compile. In the hierarchy panel, we're going to choose red. We're going to take our humanoid land controller, and we're going to drag and drop it and add it to our red game object. You'll see it appears here at the bottom. Here's the serializable field input. Right now, there's nothing selected for the input. If we were to run this, this would cause an error. We're going to select a dot to the right, and we're going to choose input handler. I'm going to make this window here a little bit bigger so that we can see better. And then I'm going to play the game. I'm going to use W, A, S, and D to move. And you can see it is moving our character and our camera is following. In our player window down here, it doesn't look like it's doing much because we have no other objects to reference. So let's go ahead and create some. Let's stop playing. In the hierarchy panel under objects, let's go ahead and create a new object. We'll call it random. We'll right click on the empty game object random that we just created. And we'll create a 3D object, a cube. And we can just leave that. Call it a cube, that's fine. Under inspector, let's add a component. Rigid body. And let's change the mass to 10, drag to two, angular to two. We wanna use gravity. Everything else is fine, we can leave that as is. In the projects panel, let's go to the misc folder that we create under scripts, right click, Create, C sharp script, and we'll call it random object color. We'll open it up. We'll remove all of this because we don't need any of it. And here's the completed script. This is not important to the character controller, so I'm not going to go over what exactly this does, but you can see we're basically just getting the component, the mesh render component. We're taking the material color and we're giving it a random color at startup within the awake function, which only gets called once. So let's go back to Unity. It's going to compile. Let's select our cube. We're going to add the script that we just made, our random color script, to the cube by dragging and dropping it onto it. Also on the cube, let's change the scale. Let's make it something like 3x3x3. Three by three by three. Uh, let's make it something more like 2x2x2. Two by two by two. Go ahead and move the camera around a bit. 
And here I'm holding shift control so that when I move the cube, it moves a quarter of a chunk or a quarter of a unit at a time. We're just going to set these in front of the player. We're going to right click, duplicate, right click, duplicate, select all three, duplicate, it again, and we'll duplicate one more time. Reposition the camera and play the game. And if we move forward, we'll run into the cubes that we set up. We knock them all around, have some fun with physics. And everything seems to be working good. Alright. If your keys aren't moving you in the right direction, make sure you double check your bindings. If we go back to input actions here, I actually messed this up in my last video. Under WASD, make sure these are right. I think I had the S and the A keys mixed up, it's just a bad habit. But yeah, make sure these are right, and if those are right and it's still doing it, then you likely got something messed up with the X and the Z. Make sure you got the X here where the X should be, and that the Y is where the Z should be. But if you got it right the first time, good on you, good job. Okay, now that the work's all done, I want to go back and talk a little more in depth on some things, explain some things a little bit better. We're looking at the player controller here, Humanoid Land Controller, we just programmed, right? And real quick, I realized I didn't point out this line of code. We got the player move, and I was just like, okay, that's it. Well, after player move executes and updates player move input, which is a global variable up here, it comes down through and takes the rigid body, adds relative force to the rigid body, equivalent to the player move input and the force mode is force, which is the default. I don't have to put that, but it's more verbose. It shows that it's intentional, and so I put that there. Um, but yeah, there's that line. And then I want to talk more about what's going on here exactly. So what we're basically doing is we're taking a 2D vector and we're turning it into a 3D vector because it's a 3D game. And what I mean by that is if we go back to our humanoid land input, where we get our input, our move input and our look input are two are vector twos, which means it just has an X and a Y, right? Because your mouse and your game pads So going back to this, again if we look at this, we have our vector two coming in, it has the X and Y of the mouse or the gamepad, the thumbstick on the gamepad. So we just have X and Y. And the Z, like I said, is your forward and back, and your Y is your up and down. So Y is effectively going to be your jump or your gravity, and we want the X to be the X still, but we want the Y to be the forward and back, and that's actually the Z in a vector 3. To visually see this, we could actually just add the X, the Y, and the Z, like so, and there you go. That just makes it a little more verbose. Okay, that's it for this video. Next time, it's going to be a bit more complicated, as we'll be adding player rotation and basic camera movement. If you're feeling generous, leave a comment down below. I want to read what you're thinking. Let me know if you have any questions or recommendations. I'd also appreciate very much if you liked the video, and if you're feeling extra, extra generous, it'd blow my mind if you subscribe to the channel. Being new to this and putting these videos together takes a lot of time and effort. Thank you for any and all participation and support. I look forward to continuing this in the next one. See ya.